and uh, if you stand with me, we'll get the physicians coming. Excited to have service. It's been a couple of weeks since we had it here at Miranda. Of course, uh, last week we had that planning session. Thank you for all those that are able to make it. And uh, of course, uh, Sister Danielle had uh, wrote in everything. She's our official note taker scribe. And, uh, met with Brother Eric Van Allen there on vacation, enjoying themselves in nice sunny Florida, Orlando. And, um, but uh, we met and we'll get you some information again. I'm excited what God is going to do in Miranda. He's done so much already. And I believe he's just going to do some more. Amen. Praise God. Why don't you uh, greet somebody you haven't greeted already, and then we'll get to worship the Lord and uh, say hello from afar, give him a handshake. It's good to have him. Dominic, right?
Castle is hunting for about two, three weeks. Uh, he's not hunting for rabbits. The older generation like myself will understand that. The kids are like, what does that mean? Uh, but he is hunting for Bambi. But uh, <laughs> Bambi. And uh, of course, Brother Rene is also not hunting for rabbits, but a different location. Uh, he is hunting for Bambi as well. So hopefully one of them gets Bambi. I'm hoping one of them will make some red chili con carne. Uh, mm. I feel witness of the Holy Ghost, and I'm kidding. Uh, tamales, amen. <laughs> yeah, something of that nature. And so have some good, good time. We do want to have a potluck for Thanksgiving, if possible, and Christmas. We like to eat around here, in case you have not uh, noticed that, and just some good fellowship. And uh, But that is what's going on. And of course, Brother and Sister Reyes are taking the offering tonight. If you want to give by card, they have that machine back there in the app. Um, but I appreciate everybody. I appreciate Everything that you do, you matter. Thank you for everything. If all you do, not all you do, but if what you do is just pray, uh, that is on top of the list here. And uh, if you help, uh, as you can see, we're using a different sound system tonight. Thank you, Brother Mark Hughes. I asked him, hey, could you put a committee together? And he just went ahead and uh, commandeered it for a little bit and got permission. And uh, hopefully the sound is good. We're testing it out for us tonight. And we'd like to buy another one and get that going. Uh, but we appreciate everybody. Thank you for everything you do, your prayers, your support. Uh, God has done amazing things. People have come and people have been delivered and refreshed. And those that uh, even have uh, just been discouraged have come back and, and knowing that the Lord loves us. And uh, we now firmly believe and know with the Lord since we're partnered with Him that there will be more souls that will come. Amen. And one of those things is the P7 Club. It's good to have Dominique again. Uh, she goes to church and is getting a double blessing being with us tonight. In fact, I believe, not to put her on the spot, that this is uh, Rihanna and Ruby's uh, cousin. Uh, she taught at least one or twice lessons already at the P7 Club. The, the kids are having 10 to 15 kids there. And so to God be the Lord for that. Let the light shine. Yeah. And so 
believe that other things will happen and the money that you've raised for that, for the food, is going to a good cause. Um, they have a lot of ideals and we're, we'll sit down with them and see what we can do. Have it maybe a function of barbecue at the park or do other things, community service stuff at the school. And, um, perhaps one day we'll have a service at the high school. That'll be exciting. Mm -hmm. A special student service led by them. And so we're excited about that. Amen. I will shut up. And if you, uh, I think Aaron, if you want to come on up here, he is our lone usher. All right, we got two. Come on up here. Amen. These, how can you say no to these boys? Amen. <laughs> you want to give up to the Lord. And again, if you need to do it electronically, the Reyes family is back there. Thank you again so much for your faithful giving. message tonight and thankfully I'm not going to preach at all tonight yeah otherwise we can go for an hour and a half and I, I don't want to do that and you probably don't want that either so um, and so we'll uh, speak on this topic I have a lot of scriptures so I'll let you be seated and uh, and I'll just read it during the message tonight uh, but my message tonight my message title is the house of the Lord will never fail you the house of the Lord will never fail you. Now, there are three things that uh, we can speak on the house of the Lord. Obviously, in the Old Testament is the tabernacle plan, the temple. Uh, the second house would be uh, the Lord Jesus. He said, if, if you destroy this temple in three days, I will raise it up. And, of course, the Pharisees were really upset with him on that. But he wasn't talking about the physical temple, Solomon's temple, King Solomon's temple. But he was talking about... Him, the temple to die for us uh, on Calvary so you and I can have salvation. And then, of course, the third temple would be you. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. What? Know ye not that ye are the temple of the Holy Ghost? The Bible says you were bought with a price. You're not your own. You were bought with the blood of Jesus. And so there are three houses. And um, But we're not going to go through all three of them tonight. So uh, rest assured, we'll, we'll keep this uh, simple. Uh, but Psalms 122 and 1. Uh, you can write that down. You can go to that now if you'd like to. Uh, I'll have a ton of scriptures, uh, so feel free to pull your phone out, uh, paper, whatever, if you'd like to write some notes. But Psalms 122 and 1 says, very uh, familiar portion of scripture, and it says simply, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. How many glad to come to the house of the Lord? Amen. Praise God. I know this is an elementary school, but when we gather here, it's the house of the Lord. Amen. And so to the point where we let the spirit of God flow in here, my prayer is, God, let your spirit reside here so these children can feel your presence. Uh, right. They're going to feel all kinds of things, depression, anxiety, all fear. You just name down the list, hopelessness. Uh, but God is so powerful, his spirit, that if we come and we rejoice and worship him and preach his word, that it will just linger. Um, the word house in the book of uh, in Hebrew, which Psalms is written in the Hebrew language, that's, this word means ba'ith. Uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Sister Missy Weed is not here tonight. She could tell us. Uh, and in the Greek word, which the New Testament is re written originally in the Greek language, is okia. And I'm not talking about kia furniture, ladies, but okia. Amen. Or maybe that's where they got it from, actually, you know, because you got to decorate your house, get furniture. And so they have uh, uh, okia furniture. But anyways... Uh, Okia, and that means dwelling. Both of these words mean dwelling, habitation, shelter, abode, place, uh, home. 
household, family, or temple. And the word house is used figuratively in scripture to denote a sense of family, family. And so uh, at least I think of this, perhaps you do too, when you go, I'm going to go home. I want to go house to my house. You're thinking not just a place to live, but to your family. Uh, Exodus chapter 20, verse 2 says, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, uh, out of the house of bondage. And so a house could also mean bondage. It can mean something that has got you uh, bound. Uh, when we get saved, uh, when we got saved, uh, we changed masters. I want you to know that spiritually speaking, that you and I were in the bondage, a house of sin and sorrow and pain. Uh, but when you get baptized in that wonderful name, when you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, uh, you change masters and you change a house and families, even kingdoms. Uh, uh, Brother Hughes and I were talking about this, uh, that I used it, his testimony often and I used various testimonies out preaching or just talking to people. And uh, he talked about uh, about probably what, 10 years or plus now that I baptized you. And we baptized him before he went under the waters uh, of baptism. Uh, he, he told the Lord, if it's okay if I tell this, he told the Lord, now I'm going to tell no matter what, but anyway, <laughs> he said, Lord, I'm having a lot of nightmares. I'm having a lot of things uh, that I need deliverance. Now, he went under the baptism for remission of sins, as the scripture says, uh, but he said something, and it always stood out to me because sometimes people will come and say, well, once you have nightmares and stuff and, and fears, you're just going to have to deal with it all your, your life. Uh, and, and I don't really like that. That's not very scripture. I know sometimes we can say that innocently, amen. Uh, but he told the Lord, he didn't tell me, he didn't tell uh, Brother Plemons who was there uh, helping me that, that day. And he, he, he told the, the Lord, you know, Lord, I have all these nightmares. Uh, I'm not only asking you to get rid of my past and my sins and making a commitment to you now. I'm asking you to get rid of all my nightmares. Uh, and he has told me more than once that when he was baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, uh, he changed houses, uh, so to speak, uh, that he has never had a nightmare in his past and everything and all that stuff. Amen. So I am thankful for the house of the Lord. I'm thankful for that. Amen. Uh, uh, when we get saved, we become a stronger Christian, the stronger in the sense of connection to the house of the Lord. Uh, uh, when we come to the house of the Lord, we get fi a physical place where God's family meets like you and I. Second Chronicles 5, 13, 14 says this. Uh, it came even to pass as the trumpeters and singers, they're having a day of worship and celebration. Uh, King Solomon and all the children of Israel, God's physical people, they were all as one, the Bible says. It's unity. To make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets uh, and the cymbals and the instruments of music. And praised the Lord saying for he is good for his mercy endureth forever. Amen. Then then the house uh, talking about that temple that physical house uh, was filled with a cloud like a glory cloud. Even the house of the Lord. Verse 14, so that the priest, the ministry, uh, could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord had filled the house of the Lord. Uh, I'm thankful for the house of the Lord. I'm thankful that when we come, uh, that the Holy Spirit uh, still fills the house of the Lord. Amen. I'm going to jump ahead here right now. I need the house of the Lord and you need the house of the Lord. Uh, we need encouragement and strength uh, and you can still find it in the house uh, of the Lord. David said it, I'll say it in modern language, uh, he said in, in one portion of Psalms uh, that he was discouraged, uh, that he, his feet uh, were almost on the wayside, that he was going to fall off the cliff, so to speak. Uh, but he said, until uh, I got to the house of the Lord, uh, all of a sudden my feet were on a sure place uh, and strength came to me. I want you to know uh, you're going to get discouraged this week. Uh, you're going to have some failures uh, and some th disappointments uh, but that means you just got to run to the house of the Lord. I can't wait to Sunday. I can't wait for a Bible study in the middle of the week because I need the strength of the Lord. Second Chronicles 7, 12 and verse 15. And the Lord appeared to Solomon, King Solomon, by night and said unto him, I have heard your prayer and I have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. Uh, if I shut up heaven that there be no more rain uh, or if I command that the locusts, uh, 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 grasshoppers, so to speak, to devour the land or, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves 
themselves uh, and pray and seek my face uh, and turn from their wicked ways. Uh, then will I hear from heaven uh, and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Uh, now my eyes shall be open and my ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. Talking about the tabernacle, the place uh, before you and I became the house of the Lord, the Holy Spirit. Uh, that's how they could uh, experience uh, God's presence. Uh, in fact, the priest, the priest, uh, uh, the high priest, one priest could go once a year deeper into the temple, into the tabernacle and to get into what we call the Holy of Holies, the scripture says. Uh, and when that priest, that high priest would go in, uh, he would sprinkle some blood uh, on the, the mercy seat uh, that represents Calvary uh, once a year to roll back the sins of the Israelites, God's people. Uh, uh, and, and, and the priest would go in uh, into the courtyard. Uh, let me tell you what the courtyard represents. Uh, it's just like a courtyard like you would see at the main church or uh, a courtyard outside in, in a plaza. The courtyard is, uh, is a place of worship and praise. Uh, and that's what we do. Uh, and the priest would go a little deeper into the altar to kill that animal. Uh, and when an animal would go to the altar, that animal would see that fire and didn't want to die, no doubt. In fact, if I saw a fire and someone tied me up, uh, I'd fight too. Uh, that's what your flesh does. Uh, every time you come to the house of the Lord, the word of God is going and letting you know, hey, maybe your attitude wasn't good or maybe this wasn't good. Uh, your flesh doesn't want to repent. Uh, but God said in my house, uh, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from my, the wicked ways, uh, then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sin. There's power in the house of the Lord. Repentance is not a dirty word. It's a thing. Uh, repentance is not something that forgives your sins. Uh, but repentance is you telling God, uh, I've been walking this way, uh, but I'm going to turn around. I'm going to do my best to live for you. I'll still fail you. No doubt I'm human, but I'll do my best. Uh, but I have found uh, that when I'm discouraged uh, or I, I, I don't have the strength to overcome sin, uh, just come to the house of the Lord. Uh, just come and feel the presence one more time. Uh, just come and hear the word of God. Uh, and then I'm energized. In my spirit. Amen. And verse 16. For now I have chosen and sanctified this house. That my name may be, may be there forever. And my eyes and mind heart shall be there perpetually. Psalms 5, 7. But as for me, uh, I will come into thy house. The tabernacle. In the multitude of thy mercy. And in thy fear will I worship. Uh, fear meaning an awesomeness and amazement. Uh, will I worship towards thy holy temple. Psalms 26.3. Lord, I have loved the habitation, your dwelling, where you at, uh, of thy house, uh, and the place where thine honor dwelleth. Uh, Psalm 27, 4 and 6. Uh, One thing have I desired of the Lord, David said, uh, that I will seek after, that I will look for uh, fervently, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord uh, all the days of my life, uh, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to acquire in his temple. Uh, for in the time of trouble, uh, he God Almighty shall hide me in his pavilion, his house, uh, in a secret uh, place, his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon the rock, uh, and now shall mine head be lifted up uh, above my enemies uh, around about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle, his house, uh, sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Uh, one thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. The house of the Lord is still a special place. The house of the Lord is where you find strength and where you and I find the mercy to go another day in this world. Amen. 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 The word therefore in this portion of scripture means uh, that's why. That's why. And so when David says, therefore, uh, he's saying, that's why I'm going to dwell in the house of the Lord. Uh, because there's mercy uh, and there's forgiveness uh, and there's safety and there is strength. That's why uh, when someone says, why are you investing so much uh, in the Bible? Why do you give financially so much to the church? Uh, why do you go to church so much? Uh, you've got to just simply let me tell you, uh, when I go to the house of God, uh, there is mercy and there is strength. Uh, my mind is not racing. All of a sudden, peace comes. Fear stops. They sound mine to my spirit. Uh, that's why I go. Uh, that's why I serve God. That's why I'm fanatical. Yeah. Because God 
That's why. Amen. Psalms 92, 13. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Coming to the house of the Lord allows you to be abundantly blessed spiritually, physically, mentally, and financially. Yeah. Psalms 84, 10. For a day in thy courts. Still the psalmist speaking about the Lord. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper, one opening the door in the house of my God, than to dwell in the tents, the houses of the wickedness. Amen. A day in the presence of God is better than a thousand spent elsewhere, is what the psalmist was saying. Not a year, month, or week, but just a day is better than living in a season of sin. The very least portion of God, in other words, he is saying, is greater than the greatest portion of the world. Your worst day, in other words, he would say, if David could speak to you and I today, he would say it this way. Saints, brothers, sisters in Christ, uh, your worst day in church uh, is better than your best years in the world. Uh, the worst day that I will ever have in church, and I've had many, because uh, we're human, uh, and I'm sure to have more, uh, is a whole lot better than the misery uh, of depression and suicide uh, that gave me from this world. Uh, give me one day in the presence of God. It is that much better. Amen. Right. <laughs> the psalmist phrase can be understood in three basic ways uh, in our modern way and I'll break it down today as best as I can number one the gate was the furthest extremity of the temple the gate the door was the furthest part of the temple to God's presence this represents humility humility in other words I would rather choose to sit at the threshold the doorkeeper has only the faintest glimpse of the temple glories. The doorkeeper hears the least of its music, tastes the little of its delicacies, if you will. Yet the psalmist is saying, I would be content to, to just be a doorkeeper at the house of the Lord and then it versus to enjoy the pleasures of the wickedness. Uh, in other words, uh, I'm not up there on the platform. I'm not up there and I'm not up sitting up in the front of church. Uh, but if I can just get to the door uh, and just experience just a little bit, uh, I may not be the high priest. Uh, I may not be a priest. Uh, <clears throat> Excuse me, but if I could just be a doorkeeper, uh, that would be more than enough for me. Uh, I'm telling you, if all I ever did, uh, if God tell, told me to wrap it up and not pastor, not preach, uh, not teach a Bible study, let's just say He did. Uh, God, uh, at the very least, uh, can I be a doorkeeper? Uh, can I still have Your presence? Uh, and can I still have it? Man, humility, humility. I'll just be a doorkeeper. Just a glimpse of Jesus is better than the ages spent serving the pleasures of the world. Number two, the doorkeepers indicated here were actually the sons of Korah, for those that know. And, and for a little while, I'll say that this represents the grace of God. Uh, again, I'd rather be a doorkeeper. Uh, from the intro to the psalm, uh, we understand that it was, if you study, it was for the sons of Korah. Korah in the ministry, the priesthood. Uh, and it was for his sons, Korah, being the father, uh, their ancestor, if you will, forefather. Uh, Korah was actually the one who led the rebellion against the prophet, the man of God called Moses. Uh, in number 16, we won't read that tonight, but you can read it on your own uh, uh, but it was Korah who was jealous uh, their forefather uh, because of the honors of the priesthood have been given exclusively to Aaron uh, Korah was jealous uh, he was mad uh, and so he rebelled against the man of God uh, let me just pause here there are things uh, that our pastor and I know I'll get you mad too uh, that get me mad because uh, we're human uh, but at the end of the day uh, submission is a beautiful word uh, just chalk it up and say God uh, you're God you do it you want uh, because it's beautiful that way. Uh, just submit. Uh, but Korah didn't want to do that. Uh, he felt that his service, uh, no humility, his service uh, in the tabernacle was inferior. Uh, so he rebelled with a man uh, uh, named Dathan and another one named Abraham. Uh, and the earth, the Bible 
says opened uh, and swallowed them up uh, and fire went out from God uh, and consumed 250 others uh, and the next morning 14,700 members uh, of the murmuring congregation uh, were destroyed by plague uh, don't tell me gossip and I know I'm preaching to the choir I know everybody's good here and I, I appreciate that but it's just for our edification and exhortation but don't tell me gossip uh, and murmuring uh, is a thing that God takes lightly uh, I, I know the world won't open up uh, but you're going to curse your children uh, you're going to curse your grandchildren uh, just be quiet and smile anyhow <laughs> that was free <laughs> Korah's sons later became prominent in the Levitical service the ministry so they obviously had separated themselves from their father's jealous act of rebellion they had in my opinion an attitude of gratitude Amen. they made a decision unfortunately Korah did the wrong thing but they decided that they would go a different route they were happy to bear burdens and open doors for the Lord in appreciation of his mercy amen so tonight I tell you this when it comes to the grace of God I'm thankful for the grace of God because if it wasn't for the grace of God you and I would be judged by actions of others in our family members if you will but God's grace is to all of us uh, he gives us two choices every day uh, there were two trees uh, in the garden of Eden uh, people think there was only one tree uh, but there was the tree of knowledge and good and evil and there was the tree uh, of life uh, every day you and I have a decision uh, will we go to the tree of knowledge and good of evil uh, or will we go to the tree uh, uh, of, of uh, 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 tree of knowledge and good and evil or the tree uh, man I'm getting old here my boys are telling me two trees two trees amen there we go my goodness that energy drink didn't kick in praise God Jonathan I'm gonna call him out he said dad you told me that yesterday you do that often amen I said don't worry about it I, maybe God wants to tell you I don't know anyways but two trees you and I have options every day to choose the tree of knowledge of good and evil and the other tree let's say it that way <laughs> two trees every day that's called the grace of God. You and I have a decision to make every day. Every day. And Korah's sons made that decision. They made the decision to have gratitude. They were happy to bear the burdens and open doors for the Lord in appreciation of His mercy. Number three, the doorkeepers could not move from their station. This represents love. In other words, I'd rather be fixed to a post in the house of my God than live at freedom, liberty. This statement can be back to ancient law concerning servants in Exodus 20, 21, verse 5 and 6. And again, we won't read that. But it is talking about if a servant had a desire to leave their master's house, that if they didn't want to, rather, that they had to get their ear, and the Bible says, bore, really pierced to the doorpost. It was an act of saying, I'm your slave, I'm your servant, but I love it here. I want to stay here to the point that I'm going to pierce my ear to the doorpost of this house. And signifying that I will forever, figuratively and literally forever tie to this house and to this master a place of service. So the writer of this psalm again is telling us that out of love, you and I can go to the house of the Lord. There is nothing. I'm going to put it this way. Old timers say it this way. Uh, the Mets are not here tonight. Pray for Brother Mets. His back is, is hurting. And, uh, and others uh, that help us out. I'm very impressed by them. I'm very encouraged. Even the Sandersons. Uh, and they come. And I mean, come on. You can just go home. You, I mean, if I were them, I'm like, man, I already went to church twice in one day. That's too much. And rightly so. But you will see them often going to the house of the Lord more than once. I'm not saying they're more righteous than us. I'm just saying that spirit. They love the house of the Lord so much uh, that they would go again. And that's what the writer is talking about. Uh, there was love. The doorkeeper uh, was saying, look, uh, all I'll do is I'll just stay here and experience a little bit of the spirit of God. Uh, but I love it so much uh, that I may not go fully in it. Uh, but if all I can do is be a doorkeeper, uh, I will do it. Amen a doorkeeper man and so you and I must be fixed and fixed to the house of the Lord to a post 
of love and holiness and of his Bible and doctrine to avoid the world's appeal. Because the world is always reaching for us, even those that are sanctified, if you will, and in the church. I'm going to give you an example. There's an English phrase that I've learned that is called a siren song. In case you don't know what it is, we'll explain it. It comes from ancient Greek mythology. Sirens were a group of, you know, fake creatures that were known as some kind of sea creature. And they had a head of a woman and the body of a bird. I don't know why they would think of something so weird, but that's what they thought. They had voices of such sweetness that mariners who heard their songs were lured to the destruction on the rocks where they sang. They were mesmerized. The Greek hero Odysseus was able to pass their island, one story says, with safety only because he stopped the ears of his companions with wax and had himself firmly lashed to the mast of the ship so he could not follow them. Hence, they made the song, or they call it a siren song, which means alluring or seductive appeal, especially to one that is deceptive. Every day, every hour, even if you're not out in the world working and you stay at home, you're retired, or you're working remotely perhaps, or whatever it may be, there is always something trying to lure you away. Always something trying to discourage you, something to tell you, what does it matter coming to the house of the Lord? And I know I'm preaching to the choir. That means everybody here loves the Lord and is here tonight, obviously. But that does not mean that you are immune from attacks throughout the week. Your righteousness is a benefit to you but also a benefit to God and His people. Why do Christians come together and worship God? Why do they spend time and money and energy for such a cause? Because God created uh, needs in us uh, that push us towards His house. Uh, let me tell you uh, very simply, and I'm wrapping up tonight, uh, that the house of the Lord uh, is a place of safety. Uh, safe to ask questions about the Bible. Safe to confess sins to the Lord. Uh, safe to bring friends and family. Uh, safe to express yourself. Uh, the house is a place of connection uh, where the church uh, should know how to pray. Uh, and I'm thankful you and I know how to pray. Uh, but we also know how to worship the Lord. Uh, the house is a place of fellowship uh, where you and I can encourage one another. Uh, a place of uplifting. Uh, the house of the Lord uh, is a place of nourishment uh, where a shepherd feeds his flock. Uh, Psalms 23 1 6 says it this way. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. In other words, I don't lack anything. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff. Uh, they comfort me. Uh, that represents the word of God. Uh, thou pertain, preparest uh, a table before me in the presence of my enemies uh, and thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy uh, shall follow me all the days of my life. Uh, but here's a portion that we miss uh, and he says, uh, I will dwell in the house uh, of the Lord forever. Uh, the house of the Lord uh, is a short place uh, and the righteous uh, can get strength in it. Amen. 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 The house is a place of the basics of Bible education. Bible attributes of God, the Spirit of God, the identity of Christ. Who He is, the great I am, the calling. What do I do with my life? Uh, what do you want me to do, Lord? A place to where we can overcome sin. The house of the Lord is a sure place, a safe place uh, of love. Love is best, best expressed in the little deeds that we call common courtesy. But God's love is greater than your love. I can love you, but my love is very temporal. My love is very conditional because we're human. But God's love is never conditional and never temporal. 
He'll tell you, if you do this, I'll do this. But it's not a, if you do this, I'll love you. Because the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. He loves us so much. And in the house of the Lord, there is love, God's love abundantly. Would you stand with me tonight? And so, my entire message tonight is simply this. The world is changing. The world is constantly changing. We have our end times. Uh, Brother Malloy couldn't be here tonight on Thursday nights. We have the food and a little bit of music. and uh, He's teaching end times. And that was a phenomenal lesson. Those who were able to make it. Uh, we do have it on YouTube. If you weren't able to be there, uh, let us know. We'll send you the link. And uh, breaking down what's in the scriptures and how it relates in our world today. I really appreciate Brother Shane Malloy doing that for us. We'll have it again this week. And uh, we're so thankful for that. We're thankful for the Word of God. We're thankful for everything that we can, can experience. Amen. The house of the Lord is a place where you and I find strength. I know, I know, tomorrow is not guaranteed. We're not trying to sensationalize this. We heard a little bit about it this morning, but we're not trying to sensationalize this. We found out with COVID, man, things could close up within seconds, minutes, within a day. Government can shut you down. And of course, we're a little bit more rebellious. We're going to have church no matter what. But <laughs> And of course, we understand if we need to do video. But this is nothing like being in the house of the Lord together. It's nothing to experience the presence of God. I know we experience in our daily prayer with the Lord. Maybe you're driving to church or to work and you're hearing some gospel music and you feel the presence of the Lord. I've had that happen many times. Or, and I know we can fellowship together one-on-one -on -one and Sometimes in a group setting, that's ha having church too. Like the P7 Club, they're having church in a high school campus. The Word of God is there. They're creating a house of the Lord right there. Yeah. Right there, there's, there's no fear. Children, students will come with fear. But I guarantee you, there's, there's three young ladies, and Jonathan, we're saw them graduated, that have the Holy Ghost. And the presence of God is right there. Perhaps maybe a student hasn't asked, hey, what is it that I'm feeling here? I know there's not jumping and shouting. What is it that I'm feeling? And I believe they'll, they'll ask. And I can foresee that we will create a house, so to speak. And I, I want you to believe with me that we're going to have a service one day in Miranda High School. Amen. We're going to see children. We're going to see students. Their eyes crying. And they're going to feel the presence of the Lord. They're going to send the glory crowd. It's going to show up. They're going to say, what is this? And we're going to say, this is Jesus. This is the Holy Spirit. This is God. This is your peace. This is everything that you need. So I want you to appreciate. I know you appreciate, but appreciate. But we don't know what's going to happen a year from now. We don't know a day. And, and I know you appreciate, but I know the devil. And I know his tactics. Uh, he'll discourage you throughout the week. Uh, he'll tell you, what is it worth to come to church? Uh, what is it worth? And I know we're coming to church. Uh, but soon and very soon, there'll be a time uh, where it's going to get harder and harder. Uh, and I'm not fearful for it. Eh? I hope the rapture happens before everything happens and we get to the Lord. Uh, but we can't guarantee you that. We don't know the scriptures that well. We're starting to know it in prophecies and all the things that are happening. Uh, and I pray it happens. Uh, I'm not fearful. I said it Thursday night. I'm not fearful. Uh, I, I, I do ask the Lord, God, could you give me a little bit more time? Uh, I got some siblings that have left you and have gone discouraged. Can you give me a little bit more time? Uh, but when that trumpet sounds, uh, I'm ready to go. Uh, and we're going to go to another house. Uh, and it's called heaven. Uh, and we're going to worship him for eternity. Uh, we're going to be there forever. And ever. No more pain. No more sorrows. No more pain. No more sorrows. Man, the house of the Lord is a precious thing. God, may God keep you and I broken enough to mend others. May God keep you and I well enough to enjoy others and to love one another. Hungry enough to feed others. Wandering enough to find the lost. Secure enough to present the truth of God. Home enough to enjoy His blessings. Out enough to see the broken hearted. Fresh enough to inspire others. 
worry enough to remain anchored in Him, uh, blind enough spiritually to believe Him anyways. Uh, when the devil says, what's the use? Uh, you're saying, but God says, uh, if I just come to His house, uh, don't forsake the assembly of ourselves, as the Scripture says. Uh, there's strength forevermore. Uh, real enough to be touched by the hurting. Uh, numb enough to endure the storms uh, of failure and discouragements and offenses uh, and bitterness. Uh, sensitive enough to feel others' pain. Weeping enough to remain dependent upon His Word and, and His church. Joyful enough to continue on. Strong enough to reach the weak. Weak enough to reach out to the strong. May God help us to always be growing and changing. If you lift your hands right where you're at and continue to pray to the Lord. And I want you tonight to thank the Lord for the house. He made a house when it was too far on Ina Road. He said, I'll bring the house to you. When it was too far to come. I remember as you're praying, we have one member that told me it's too far. It's too far. It's too far. Jesus. And one member said, it's too far on Grace Retreat. That member of this church told me, he said, the moment we moved to Estes Elementary, that God spoke to him and said, what about now? You're just around the corner. What do you think about that? God has prepared a house. We're talking, you now Joey, can't wait to have that building. We're going to build a building. We're going to build a house for the Lord. A physical house. I know we're the house, the temple now, the Holy Ghost. I get that, but there's a physical place. And I've seen, Brother Mark Hughes has told me and others, they've seen a vision. The gifts of the Spirit seen a vision of that house. That building. And we're going to build it. Sister Lisa Ross, I don't know how God's going to use you with your business. Uh, you're going to find some land. And Brother Malloy's not here. And there's someone that wants to give us a building. And we're going to plant it out there. And I don't know how we're going to have the finances. And I don't know that. And all I know is that God said we're going to have a house. Uh, we're going to have a building. Uh, and there's going to be people filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, we're going to have land for it. We're going to have land for it. Would you lift your hands? Would you love the Lord tonight? Uh, Thank Him for the house. Thank Him for preparing a place where we can worship Him. Jesus, I love you and I thank you that you've given us buildings to rent already to, to worship you and to magnify you. You've made us mobile. You've given us a house of a Bible club and ran a high school and you put us on Twin Peaks at the clubhouse and you put us here. We're thankful, God, that you prepared a place, a house where we can worship you and magnify you. We exalt you for it. We love you for it, God. We love you for it, Jesus. We bless you for it, Jesus. Hallelujah. You're talking the Holy Ghost right now. Would you let that sweet spirit just flow in you. Let the presence of God encourage you and comfort you right now. He loves you enough. He loves you enough put a house of worship right next to your place, not far from you. We worship you, Father. We magnify you. We exalt you, Jesus. We glorify you. You are worthy. You are mighty. You are mighty, O God. You are mighty, O God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Man, if you are willing to, why don't we come together to get together and let's just praise the Lord together. No obligation is nothing that mandate. I'm not going to mandate you. That's not what we do. If you'd like to come a little closer together, perhaps as friends.